Oh, cool. Okay. So we're just the sea things that are up right awesome. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so these are the... This is this is jewel weed. Um, this is really small. This plant can grow, you know, waist high. Um, and sometimes it'll just be, a, you know, along roadsides, just patches of it. And this is one that you can pull on a roadside, because it's, it's, you're not taking it internally. You're putting it on your skin. Um, but it gets these wonderfully, this wonderful big node, this kind of big crimson node right here at the base of the base of the plant when it's an adult it's this big one and that that's just loaded with sap so if you just take your thumbnail and kind of split it open it's just water that comes out of it but that water uh that, that sap that is what it, it takes all sorts of this is antifungal you can use it to treat athlete's foot um you can use it uh for like uh like a yeast infection in your ear that sort of thing you know one of those things you can use it um you can use it as it's an antibacterial plant, uh, not quite as stringent as something like garlic. Garlic, actually, you know, very it can kill you know kill bacteria easily. Um, but this is also this also is one of the few plants that uh, takes the oil from poison ivy. The the oil that's on the leaf of poison ivy it actually disperses it and and breaks it up and in, into a non-irritating form. It really does. Though. It really does. If you if you if you rub poison ivy on your arm and slap some jewelweed on it, um, as long as you're thorough, you so you have to find that node though and, and split it's that not open. just the node, but that's where that's where it's really great. Yeah, you can use the leaves, but I mean it's that node's just loaded with the sap. I think if, so, if you open you up the the stem, it's almost like aloe vera a little right, bit. Yeah. Sometimes. It depends. Oh, if it's really that. dry, it's not that. as juicy. Yeah. Okay. I would be I would be interested because I found I've I've read that it's very. Oh, I've, I've read that it's really hard to prepare it any other way than just out of the plant. No, so, I, I so, just, when you cook your soap, melt yeah. your, I use glycerin too, I always yeah. use fancy stuff, but it, I use glycerin because it's easy Do you put, to So is it fresh it. jewelweed? Yeah. Okay. And I just throw the fresh jewelweed in it and then I strain it out as I pour it okay. in. Okay. Well, that would make sense because it's right there, but yeah. I mean, as far as preparing it, I've heard the preparations of jewelweed just aren't as effective yeah. as, as like the plant. Um, but what were you asking? Is there, a is there a difference between the yellow and the orange jewelweed? Yeah, one 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 is yellow. It's okay. actually called yellow. Uh, I'm not I'm not like being sarcastic. It's actually called yellow jewelweed, and the other one's orange or orange spotted jewelweed. Okay, is there a difference on the medicinal qualities of no, either? Okay. No, they're they're the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, and they're also called touch me knots. If anybody remembers what a touch, if you ever seen it, the seed pod on it. Yeah, they're the seed. Right. Great fun for the kids. Oh, they are. Yeah. They're great, and even adults can kind yeah. of jump the first time. The, the seeds are spring loaded. I mean, they've got all this tension on them, um, and when they've got just the right amount of pressure or the right touch, they'll pop open and shoot their seeds out. Which is very great. It's a very you know effective way to spread your seeds. You get a big patch of it that just keeps getting bigger. You know. Because um, the patch on the outside shoots its seeds, and, you know, just keeps getting bigger. So that's pretty effective. 